afraid I do not have that perfectly dashing and fancy, uh, fancy accent, British accent, as the previous speaker. And the topic of why is this here? And the topic of my of my presentation uh, today is not. Uh, it is complicated. It is technical. But you know what? It is very important because. The way you treat data protection and the way you treat privacy of people will affect your business. People who do not, who feel that their data is not properly protected or who feel that you're invading their privacy will run away to other businesses and your businesses will be affected. So today what I'm going to do, I will walk you through some of EU data protection and privacy rules, hoping that we can uh, incite a discussion here, a reflection process, how your businesses can adopt good data protection and privacy practices and drive, uh, and drive forward. Uh, as you can see, oh yeah, before I start, everything that I say today is my personal opinion. It does not reflect the opinion of my, of my employer. And everything that I say you should take with a pinch of salt because EU data protection regulation is being still discussed. It's adopted, but it's supposed to be implemented next year. So there's still lots of vagueness in uh, in uh, in how how this uh, regulation will be will be will be interpreted. So as you can see here, uh, I intentionally put some uh, a photo of people from 80s and 90s. The topic of this whole conference is they uh, are uh, connected shopper. So who was a uh, connected shopper 20 or 30 years ago? It was. Uh, you were connected by a direct mail, probably, or your mother would buy something for you, such as underwear, and I know that's very common in Serbia, by asking your neighbor where can she find your favorite color. What was the, what was the privacy risk at the time, apart from your neighbor understanding your favorite color of, of your underwear? There was no, but today, me, as a person, I am my own data universe. I have multiple social media profiles, uh, so many companies have placed their cookies on my devices, all of my devices. So desktop, my, my laptop, my, uh, my mobile phone, my tablet. And so I am, as I said, I am a data universe. And all of this data that I am emitting all the time, your companies want it, right? In order for, for me to allow you to enter and to take my data and to process it in a way that your company can further, uh, further uh, benefit from it, I need to understand, I need to trust you. And until now, I don't know, do you think that users are actually trusting your companies? Who, who can tell me here, users are trusting my companies that I'm keeping my, uh, their data in the correct manner and that I'm uh, being privacy friendly? I'm not, I'm not sure how many companies can, can say that. But this will, so what I want to do today, I want you to ask yourself, are we listening to people? Do people trust you? Do they know who you are? So if I'm in a shopping mall and there are these, uh, and uh, there, is, there is obviously a shopping mall, there, I get these commercials based on my location, do I know who is actually processing my data in order for that, uh, that specific ad to be shown to me? Do they know how their data is being handled? And finally, are our consumers turning their back at us? If you look at some ad blocking statistics, you will see that many people, yes, they, turn their, uh, they, they install ad blockers because they really hate those ads interrupting their favorite YouTube video. But many people are increasingly uh, installing not only ad blockers, but other, uh, other technologies in order to prevent advertising companies placing cookies and invading how they say their, their privacy. This is a, this is a, this is a real uh, dear issue. So have we done, how have we played this game in the wrong way? Can we, can we, can we go back? And that's why GDPR is a game changer. GDPR stands here for General Data Protection Regulation. Uh, it is a regulation adopted by the European Union last year, and it will come into effect next year. 
uh, on 25th of May 2018 and it will completely change the way you are doing business because you as a company you will have to be more accountable, more transparent and your transparency will drive um, a better trusting relationship with, with, your, uh, with your consumer. GDPR is already called, some people may disagree, is already called a golden standard of data protection. Many countries around the world are considering adopting a similar, a similar uh, legal framework. So, again, as I said, what I want to do today is I want you to engage on a reflection process how your company is treating data, how you are treating your, your consumer privacy. Because let's also think about our future consumers. Everybody is speaking today about millennials and centennials. And, you know, all the ghetto, you're, you are very lazy and you are uh, this Instagram, Instagram generation. But you know what? Millennials and centennials really care about social issues. They care about environment and they increasingly care about privacy. So, you know how in advertising they often say the one who does something will win. Well, the one who does, uh, who protects data and takes privacy seriously will win in a, in a, in a long run. Are you... So these figures, I want you to think also about them. So what is 4% of your, of your annual uh, global turnover or 20, million, or 20 million euros? So these are the fines that you will have to pay if you're not complying with GDPR. It is, uh, it is very stringent. These are the highest, uh, highest fines. There are a lot of fines. It depends on what kind of breach, but it does not go below 10 million, 10 million euros. But, I want, to, I want to stop you right there. Compliance with GDPR, with General Data Protection Regulation, is not about money. It is not supposed to be a coercion. You cannot coerce your consumers, your, your people, into trusting you. Compliance with data protection is about, uh, is supposed to be an act of responsibility and accountability. So, Let's think about it, how can we do? For that, GDPR establishes data protection principles. So you have lawfulness, fairness, meaning that you have to be able to legally process somebody's data, to be fair about it, transparent, to process it only for a specific purpose. So you can't really just take somebody's data and say, I'm gonna process it for, for, uh, for this purpose, and then I may process it for something else, you, you, just, you just cannot do that anymore, or unless, is, unless the purpose is compatible. That's a bit of a legal term, and I'm not going to really go into too many details, legal details today. Uh, the data that, sh that you have should be accurate, and you should store the data only, uh, only as long as you need it. And finally, the final principle, which is a golden, really a golden standard, it's accountability. You need to be able to prove that you are complying with GDPR. And you're probably thinking, yeah, my company is based in Serbia, what the hell do I care about this? Well, I'm telling you, that's very wrong, because you should care. How many companies here do their business with Croatia? Well, there you are. That's your answer. Croatia is a member of the European Union. If you're offering services in the Union or monitoring people in the Union, you have to comply, uh, to comply with GDPR, but regardless of this, digital advertising crosses borders. It, uh, it goes beyond one single country, it goes even beyond one single continent. So this is the reason why GDPR is not, it's just not uh, uh, this acronym, four letter acronym that you can just pass away. You, you, have, to, you have to take it seriously and, and build on it. So I'm now going to go a bit into, into details and do not fall asleep because I promise you I shall hear you snoring. Um, when can you process somebody's data? The GDPR offers a couple of, couple of uh, legal grounds. Uh, first, of, first of all is a contract. So if I go to a, to a mobile operator, I need to give them my name, I need to give them my account in order for this contract to be, uh, to be, to be established. And then there is a consent, and it sounds easy. So somebody is consenting, but what is a purposeful consent? When is it? When can you say yes? I've got the right one. First of all, the consent has to be very specific. 
So I, as a consumer, I'm consenting to a specific data processing, uh, data processing uh, operation. It's supposed to be freely given. So let's take this situation. You're going to a, to a website, and the website tells you you cannot access, you cannot read my news unless uh, you accept on me placing cookies on your on your mobile uh, on your mobile phone. This there is a lot of discussion currently in Brussels, and this is really uh, still being discussed. But there are some people who say, but you cannot coerce people into giving a consent. Consent is supposed to be freely given, so if you tell me that your service is dependent on me accepting your, on me accepting to be, uh, my privacy being intruded, uh, it is not a freely given, it is not a freely given consent, which essentially we come to the point, it's a philosophical point, right, but it's very important. Is, is, the, is a consent, is data a currency, can you pay with your, with your data, and can you say to people, yes, using my website, using reading my news is for free, is it really for free? Or you are, or am I paying with my, with my, with my data? And then there is, uh, you're probably now thinking, yeah, consent sounds too, too complicated, I'm just gonna rely on legitimate interest, because it is my legitimate interest to sell uh, my products to, to advertise my products to people so they would buy it and I would keep running my business. Well, I, I, can, sell, I can tell you it is a not a magical solution because if you want to use a legitimate interest, you have to prove that your business's legitimate interest uh, does not override somebody's fundamental rights. Data protection and privacy are fundamental rights. They are like freedom of expression or freedom to pro or right to property. They cannot, be, they cannot be just tossed aside and discarded. So when you think about it, does really your, your business, uh, interest of your business override my fundamental right? What GDPR does, they, they recognize that, uh, that direct marketing is a legitimate interest. However, if you decide to send somebody an email or you decide to send them uh, a more uh, a more particularized message, that person has to be able to opt out immediately. And after he or she says, no, I don't want to receive this fancy catalog from IKEA, for example, you shall not send them ever again. You have to stop, you have to stop using their data almost immediately. And oh, wow, well, this is a complicated one. So we have, we have profiling. The advertising industry is all about profiling. And what GDPR does, they offer two types of profiling, more or less. One is regular profiling, right? The second one is the profiling that produces a decision which, uh, which produces a significant effect on a person and which is based only on and solely on automated decision making. What does it mean? So if you look at, for example, programmatic, is there a human intervention in programmatic? Is, does me seeing an ad of Nike does it really legally and significantly affect me? If that is the case, I will have to be, I will have to explicitly consent uh, for you to use my data in order to, in order to, to profile me. So I prepared a little example. So you have a person, and this person is a big fan of, of, of expensive cars. So he, one day, he walks through a shopping mall and in the meantime, before that, he searched on search engines uh, expensive cars and their prices. So you placed cookies on his mobile phone and on his desktop. He, uh, your, his bank also has his data and they are able with his email to target him with proper technologies. So this person one day walks, into, uh, walks through a shopping mall and because he is giving away his location his, to, to his mobile operator, uh, he will see uh, he will see this he will see this Mercedes and he will think oh my God I, maybe I can buy or maybe I can really afford this Mercedes. He goes online he, to check specifications and there it is an ad for a, a for a loan from a bank. Would you like to be able to afford uh, a nice fancy Mercedes? And he says oh yes maybe I can consider that. He clicks on it. He goes into a bank. He takes a loan of twenty or thirty thousand euros and there you are. Uh, a significant, a significant effect. 
which means that the person before he or she is able to 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 get that ad, he may be he may be able to to explicitly consent to to get the ad. I know it's very it's it's mind boggling, and this is I, I just have to put a little disclaimer here because this is really still being discussed. To what extent it will become it will be it will be the case uh, as this, but there are people who are saying that they will, rather than limiting the type of data that you can use, that they will limit the purpose, meaning that you cannot target people in a discriminatory way. So you cannot target people in order to change their political views. And I'm sure that you all heard a bit about how data is being used for, uh, for uh, Brexit and Trump's victory. And it's, it's, highly, it's highly tense and ideological debate, data protection and privacy, and it, it will become even, even more in the future. So now we're going to get a bit into what are the rights of your consumers. So me as a consumer, I enjoy lots of rights according to GDPR. So you can see there is right to access, right to rectification, right to erasure, and it's really lots of lots of rights. So I'll just tell you quickly about it. So what is right to access? So one day I decide to come to you and I and to your company and I ask you hi. I would like you to tell me who are you, wh who is, uh, what kind of data of me do you have, to whom are you disclosing it, and I want you to explain the profiling logic. How, what is the logic behind the profiling that you're using, and I want you to explain me the envisaged consequences. What are the consequences on me if you're profiling me? And on top of all of that, I want a copy of all of my data to be provided to me in uh, Can you do this? Can any company, apart from the big ones, can they really do this? This is going to be a significant burden to, to all big companies. And then we have right to erasure or right to be forgotten. So somebody somewhere processed my data the way I didn't like it. And I say, oh, really, I, I dislike this. I'm, going to, I'm not consenting to this anymore. And can you please, I come to you and I tell you, can you please erase all of the data that you have about me? But I don't want you only to erase it. I want you to inform all of your partners and suppliers that they should also erase. So think about the advertising industry. So if I go to an advertiser, advertiser is supposed to inform the agency, uh, the all suppliers, in order to get, uh, in order for my data to be to be erased. GDPR does say that this should be done uh, according to the uh, not. You should not put too much effort in this, but you should take all the necessary effort to do it. But anyway, it is what it is. And then we have right to data portability. So one day I decide that my, uh, my provider, a telecom company, uh, is not providing me with the best service there is. And then what do I do? I go to, to the company and tell them, I want my data in a machine-readable way so I can transport it to another telecom provider who's going to give me better, better services. And I can completely, according to GDPR, that's something I can really do. So you're supposed to, to give me all the data that you have about me with, with a little of, uh, with a bit of exceptions. Uh, I'm not going to go too into, into these uh, exceptions uh, now. So, and all of this is supposed to be provided in a machine readable way. Meaning that if I take it from one place to another, that the other place can read what the first what the first company provided me with can read my my data. I see some of you being uh, I see your faces. I don't know if it's a surprise or you're just bored, but it, it is it is what it is. And then information to be provided to a to a person. So you have uh, you have I, I come to your website and you want to place a cookie. On my on my mobile phone, and this is the information that you have to give me. So you have to tell me who you are, the contact person, how, why are you going to process my data? What is the purpose? The legal basis: Are you using uh, a, a, my consent, or you're using your legitimate interest? If you're using your legitimate interest, I want you to explain me what is your legitimate interest. Who is going to get my data? Uh, where can I lodge a complaint, a complaint if I want to? 
and I want you to explain me the envisaged consequences and the logic involved if you are profiling. And on top of all of this, you also have to tell me about the existence of my rights. So you have to tell me at that moment that I have the right to port my data, that I have the right to erase my data, uh, and uh, etc. So now when you've seen all of this, how transparent is your company to a connected shopper? Are you able to, to provide them with all of these rights, or are you, are you engaging in a reflection process to, to, get to, to get to that spot? Because many companies, when it comes to GDPR compliance, many companies are here, and they're supposed to be here, and there is only one year left. And in the meantime, if you don't get to here, there is a ban, uh, a fine of 20, of 20 million uh, euros, or Mac or 10. So, how to prove accountability, how to prove that you're actually uh, complying with GDPR. There are, GDPR gives you a couple of, couple of uh, place, a couple of tools to do that. The first one is data protection impact assessment. So, your company, if you're processing data and it's highly risky, and they already said that online behavioral advertising is a high risk data processing procedure, you have to have a data protection impact assessment. This is a document where you say why you're processing your data, their uh, consumer data, what is, the, uh, what is the risk, and if there is a risk, you have to say which exactly actions you're undertaking in order, to, uh, in order to mitigate these risks. The second one is data protection officer. So, from 25th of May 2018, many of our companies will have to have a data protection officer. It is, uh, it is a person who is in charge for compliance with data, with data protection and privacy regulation. This person has to, has to make sure that everything is done in accordance to the, uh, to the, to the law. And what is the, the best part of it is that this person has to be very independent and has to communicate directly with the highest level of your of, of, your, of your management. And then I think this is probably the most important one. Data protection by design and by default. This means that every time you collect somebody's data, you have to make sure that uh, if, you need, if you need raw data, you can use it as it is, but it would be better if you could uh, pseudonymize it or anonymize it and automatically by collection, reduce the risk as such. Data protection by design, it means that you have to take all technical and organizational measures. So compliance with GDPR is really not one, it's not one of these things that you can just tick 10 boxes. Your whole organization has to change in order to do this. Otherwise, as I said, there is a, there is a fine. Um, and then, you are thinking probably, yeah, but this advertiser, they contracted me. And now I am going to, I'm going to just, uh, uh, if there is a problem, I'm just going to say it's not my fault, it's the advertiser's fault. He told me that I should, that I can, uh, that I can do this thing with data. It's a big no-no starting from 25th uh, of May of uh, 2018 because uh, GDPR does, uh, places a bit more of liability now on data processor. First of all, I should explain you who these people are. So data controller, is a, is a company that determines the means and, process, and processing purposes, whereas data processor is a, is a company that carries out processing. In some places, it is possible that, the, that uh, there is a joint controller as well, meaning that two companies are deciding. So, for example, if you have an advertiser and an agency, there may, it could happen that these two companies are both controllers. I know it's, it, it's, uh, it's tricky, but anyhow, uh, what GDPR says is that data processors will have to take all these necessary precautions, such as data protection, impact assessment. They have to have uh, all this documentation saying how they're processing data and why they're processing it. And they're also being, uh, they will also pay fines. Another thing that GDPR does is they te uh, GDPR tells you that there is a contract uh, that you as a data controller and data processor, you have to sign 
and if you sign it, there the data controller, meaning the advertiser or the agency, you have to make sure that everything uh, is put in place that the, that the company whom you hired to process data has everything uh, is fully compliant. And, for example, if you are one data, if you are hired by a company to process their data, and you want to hire a third or a fourth company, uh, the, the company that hired you from the beginning has to approve all these companies. So you just can't go really wild and say, I'm going to work with, uh, with more. And so my question to you, if you look at your, at your companies, who is a data controller and data processor? Who is liable and, uh, for what? And can you can you can you make a, can you make a de, can you make a distinction? Do you have all contracts in place? And if not, are you planning on, on, on doing it? And this is this is another piece of legislation I just want to bring forward to you because this is currently being discussed and it's going to be it's going to complement GDPR and this regulation is going to change completely and it's going to be even stricter than GDPR. What it's saying is that everything will basically be consent-based and your softwares and browsers uh, will probably, we, don't st we still don't know because everybody's currently lobbying, but uh, all browsers and softwares may, uh, may ask you upon installation to reject or accept or tracking. Uh, you, you, cannot, you may not be able to use the browser itself or any other software such as app unless you uh, reject or accept uh, cookies. So, as I said, connecting business, business objectives and data protection, I think this is, should be the driving force for the, advertising, for the advertising industry. So, at the end of the day, will there be a connected shopper? What do you think? I think yes, but you may call them empowered connected, connected shoppers. And my name is Tavan Angelovic. I do not have one of these fancy titles such as futurist or, or prophet or, uh, or mentor or whatever, but I hope I gave you a bit of a glimpse of where our industry is heading to and why we will have to get there. Thanks. There is one there. There is one there. Yeah, come on, brother. So, third question, how does Google and Facebook fit in this image? Will they just pay 4% or...? I didn't hear you. You can go to the microphone. Uh, Google and Facebook fit in this image? Will they, they just pay those 4%? Yes, they will just pay those 4%. Yes, they will just pay those 4%. Yes, they will just pay those 4%. <laughs> I'm sure they don't want to pay a 4% of their global turnover. Uh, Google and Facebook and other companies are already taking lots of measures, but this is, uh, maybe it's not fair to say this, but it's uh, easier for big companies such as Google and Facebook to comply with, uh, with these regulations. It's, it, it is much, much more difficult to comply uh, for smaller companies and SMEs or companies up to 250 people. And that's the, that's the ultimate problem here, because essentially Google and Facebook, have, they have the means. They can pay lots of lawyers, they can pay lots of, uh, uh, lots of consultants, and they have the technological means to develop also technology that will help them do this. The issue, for, uh, the issue is, the real issue are actually SMEs and, and smaller companies than Google and Facebook. Thank you. I saw one there. Uh -huh. Od mikrofon, do mikrofona ide gore, samo tehničko obaveštenje, ko je parkirao motor ispred, mislim da je najavljen pao da dolazi, tako da da se vidite da pogleda. Ownership of your own data. Yeah, but if you look at if you look at this, you're both in a way responsible because you tell them how, uh, that they should process the data and they process it for you. So you give them the me, you tell them how to process it, and they just process it. There is no uh, there is no way that you can ever say again, I'm not responsible for this. 
you will always be responsible, even in those cases. You, uh, you know, it's, it will be very difficult to say, you go ahead, you're responsible, I am I'm off the hook. It's, it's, it's really a, a no-go end. That's it? Okay. Thank you.